In today's guide, we're going to walk through what seems like it would be a pretty basic system, which is to implement a system that can find duplicates. So this may seem easy because if you know about the unique method, you know that if I type in 1, 2, 1, and then 3, and then call unique on it, if I could spell it correctly, it'd help. So unique is spelled U-N-I-Q. Now, if I run this, it's going to return an array of one, two, and three because it removes the duplicates. And this is usually what you would need. However, there are plenty of times where you actually want to know what the duplicate values are. And so that's what we're going to build out. Now, I have two test case scenarios, and they are very different, but they have a few similarities such as we have a test case that says it returns duplicates from an integer based array you can kind of think of this as the base case scenario here we have an array of integers of one two one four and we expect when we call find duplicates to get a array back with the duplicates in there in this case we only have one duplicate which is this number one now that's one test case. The second one is that we have a full set of hashes. So we have, even though this may seem very, very different at the end of the day, they're just objects. They're ju this is just another array, but it looks like it'd be more complicated. The reason why I put this in here is because my idea for this coding exercise came from when I was using FreshBooks. FreshBooks is what I use to manage my personal and consulting business. And when I uploaded an expense, at some point I accidentally uploaded it twice and FreshBooks had a very cool little system so when I logged in it said oh it looks like you have a duplicate expense and then it showed it to me gave me a choice to delete it or to keep it in this case I had hit submit twice I guess or something like that happened either way there was a duplicate expense in there and I was able to quickly simply delete it so that it could bring the the balance sheet back up to where it was supposed to be so that is what we want to implement. So here I have an array of invoices and each one of these invoices, some of them are unique, some of them are different. But as you can see right here, we have a hash that has company, an amount, a date, and an employee. Then we have this one for Yahoo. Then we have one for Google. So as you can see, this one, the very first one, is slightly different just because the date is slightly different. Instead of it being uh, 1 1, it's 7 31. Everything else is the same, but that's different. Now, this one right here, though, is completely the same as this one. So that one should come back as a duplicate in the same thing with this one. The third one, or this is another match. So this one should be, should be sent back because it's a duplicate as well. And then this last one is also a duplicate and it has different values. So that is a set of test cases. Now the interesting thing is we're not going to have to do anything different to get this one working as this. So in other words, when we can get the base case working, we are good to go and we'll have passed this exercise. Now the first thing I'm going to do is open up the array class and you can always tell that that's what you need to do whenever you see the method being called on the data type. In this case it's being called on an array. Now I'm going to call this method find duplicates. It's not going to take any arguments because it can call itself on whatever array it's working on. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select items. So I'm going to say I want to select with index the values. And this is going to this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky if you have never done this before. First argument for the select method with index is going to be the element. And then the second is going to be the index. Now inside of this, I want to show you something before we even get to the implementation. On one line, I'm going to place i, which is index, and the next one I'm going to call self.index and pass in e. Now let's come, let's take the easy base case scenario one, 
and now call ints dot find duplicates. And this is not the implementation. This is more of I want to show you how I was able to figure out this implementation. So right here we have select being called. It returns an enumerator. And then from there we have the indexes. Now we know the index because it's an array is going to be 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now this is where it starts to get a little bit tricky. We need to be able to find duplicates but we need to be able to find it in a little bit of a clever way because how are you going to find it unless you perform some type of comparison on each one so technically and if you followed along before actually watching the video you may have done something such as iterating over and then pass in each time that you found a match you could pass it back into an array and if it found a duplicate it could return it now that's technically a way of implementing this but that would be horrible horrible from a performance point of view. Just imagine if you had a million items you needed to sort through. If you tried to do that and you performed a comparison for every item and you had to so so say you had the invoices and you had a million of those invoices, you'd have to literally perform a comparison of each one of these. So if I come down here, you'd have to come through and say, okay, this invoice right here, is it like this one? No. Is it like this one? No. Is it like this one? Yes. Okay, that's a duplicate. And then it would go through all the way until it found all the duplicates. Then it would come back and it would do the same thing. I mean, this would take a very long time. Maybe not for, you know, only like seven or so invoices, but once you start getting up to even the low thousands you're going to run into some horrible for performance issues so what this is doing is it's doing it in a much faster way so what it is doing is it is taking the array so the array that it's being worked on is called self that's how we reference that specific array and so we're saying self dot index what does the index method do well Index is something that can be called on an array, and then you pass in an element, and it performs the search for you, but it does it in a very, very fast way. So what it does is it took the array, and it said, okay, very first element, and it, in this case it was one, so it found it at the zeroth place then it went and it went to the very next one and it said okay this value of two where is it it is on and the in the first index now don't get the zeroth and the first confused remember the first is technically the second element in the array so just to walk through because i when i was walking through this implementation this one took me a little while to uh, to figure out a fast very performant way of doing it so right here we have zero and then we have one now how did we get zero here well that is why this is so good from a performance point of view so what this is doing is index actually just returns the index value and so all it's doing is it's saying that I found this second one right here I found this at index zero so instead of going through the full set of items it only had to find one element and it said okay this one's a duplicate because we found it already right here and then it stopped and then it was able to just and eventually we'll put it inside of an array we haven't done that part yet and then the next one which is four this is at the third index in the array so that is how we are finding it is we're going through and we're actually comparing the value in seeing if any other values are have other indexes that are already there in place and from that point all we have to do is say i is not equal to self dot index pass in and not three pass in e 
And these were here just for debugging, so I can delete this. And so all this is doing is saying, I want you to select the items where you can't find another index for them. So in that first example, we didn't have a index value for one already set. It was, it was set at zero and it was the first one. The next one, we didn't have any other twos at index one. This one, we did have a one and it was at index zero. So it just completely ignores it. It only grabs the ones that are actually unique. But, and then your first question may be, well, why did we do is not equal to? And it's because we're not trying to replicate the unique method. We're trying to replicate or we're trying to create the ability to find the duplicates. So that is where that gets so powerful. So let me hit save and let's see if this actually works. So I'm going to run this code. And you can see that that worked perfectly. So right here we have a our one duplicate in there. Now if I were to add some other items, so five, three, and two, this should give us one and two, and it does. So that is working exactly the way we need it to. And the coolest part about this is it is incredibly fast. This is so good from a performance point of view because we have the ability here to simply bypass and only care about the checks. And this only cares about the conditional check where the uh, you know, where it hasn't found that value yet. So uh, as soon as it finds it, it says, okay, we found that item, now we can keep going. and it it, because it's doing it on indexes, then this is going to make it a much faster option than the other one that's available. Now, now that we have this in, and actually before we go on too far, I'm going to hit save. And let me actually run this to make sure that all of these tests actually are passing. March 27th. Perfect. Two examples, zero failure. So we now have the ability to find duplicates in an array. Now this was our very fast, very good way of doing it, but I, in the next guide, we're going to actually keep the tests the same and we're going to implement a much slower option. And you may wonder why, and the reason is because I think it's very important to understand the difference because if you're asked whether you're in a job interview or whether you're building out a system, it's important to understand what type of implementations will have certain kinds of ramifications from a speed perspective. And so that is very important. It's, it's critical when it comes to developing algorithms. And so I want to show you, I wanted to show you the right way to do it in this one. And in the next guide, we're going to go through, I wouldn't say a wrong way. It's a way that works perfectly fine, but it's different and it is slower. So in that guide, we're gonna go through a little bit more of a functional way of implementing this.